Hello, this video is uh, based on an incredibly patient uh, viewer who posted me an essay comparing remains and wall photographer. Um, I had a look at it, but it didn't properly uh, follow the Bootsy model that I use in my How to Compare Poems uh, videos. Um, check those out if you want to see more about the Bootsy model. Um, she rewrote it and I gave it a mark, put it in level six, um, well, nearly level six, um, and asked her to make some improvements, which she's done. And uh, there you can see our correspondence. Um, and so let's take a look at that essay now. So the exam is marked in levels, and then all your marks are added together, and the exam board then gives you grades. Okay, so the top of the level is where the top grades will come from. And there are 10 things in this exam that the examiners want. And that's what we're going to explore in this video. Um, we're going to see if Charlotte's managed to be critical, exploratory, structure her argument well. Uh, what does conceptualized mean? Uh, has she addressed the full task? Has she got the full range of references? Uh, what on earth does fine-grained mean? I'll explain that. Does she look at language and form and structure? Notice that in the top level, you have to talk about all three, um, which is really annoying and really difficult to do, actually. Um, when I do my practice exam answers, um, I often do either the form or the structure, and it's often easy to forget one. Um, uh, has she used subject terminology? And is she convincing when she talks about... Um, luckily, only one of these or more. So you don't have to talk about the contextual factors. Um, if you do, though, it's a really easy way to tell the examiner that you're doing this 10th point. So I would advise you to include some context, even though you don't have to, but simply because it's a trigger for the examiner to say, whoops, yep, you've definitely got into uh, this 10th skill. Okay, the B in Bootsy stands for Compare the Beginnings. Uh, Charlotte doesn't have a real question. She's just decided to write an essay which will help for any comparison of Remains and War Photographer. So the poem Remains begins with a soldier who has slaughtered a mere looter and he has got away with it. And this therefore suggests his uncertainty as they are possibly armed, possibly not. The soldier's uncertainty could perhaps suggest that his memories are a blur because he reflects his actions constantly through the repetition of possibly to signify that he has thought about his actions so much that he can't recollect his memories at the time. Uh, so this is a very good um, introduction to um, the protagonist of the poem. What's missing is the purpose of the poet in this stage. So what does the poet want us to think about this protagonist? Uh, that's missing, so that should come next. And then the next paragraph will compare the poet's purpose at the beginning of War Photographer. So let's see what happens. Okay, so Charlotte has, in fact, now giving us next the poet's purpose. Although the poem is spoken by a soldier rather than Armitage himself, it shows how his actions have affected his conscience, Armitage is questioning our involvement as peacekeepers in conflicts such as Iraq and Afghanistan. This is therefore showing that the soldier must deal with his actions alone, almost as if he is being treated unfairly. OK, well, let's look at the marking criteria so far. Um, it's being exploratory because Charlotte is thinking about what Armitage might be saying. She said almost as if. It's becoming conceptualized because she's giving the point of view of the poet. And that's the skill. Writing about the poet's viewpoint and purpose will always hit this idea of being conceptualized. That's why I ask you to do it. Um, is it well structured? Well, we're going to find out uh, by seeing if she immediately now goes to compare it to the other poem, War Photographer. And yes, she does. The idea of being treated unfairly can be linked directly to War Photographer, as the photographer is in his dark room, he is finally alone. Dark room is where photog photographs can be developed, and so the lighting is quite dim. However, this could reflect his emotions, since the colour dark has connotations of misery, dullness and dreariness. Therefore, this represents his feelings towards his job, and perhaps the emotions he feels once returning from the Vietnam War 
after taking many disturbing images. Um, so this essay's got a bit of a problem here. It's made this excellent point um, that this uh, idea of being treated unfairly is also in War Photographer, but then the example used to back that up, um, linked to misery, dullness and dreariness, are not linked back to ideas of things being unfair. Um, the unfairness here in this poem is that the photographer is um, going through this incredible emotional turmoil in order to bring back these horrific images and that they make no difference to the course of the war, the general public just don't care. That's the level of unfairness. Um, now Charlotte knew that, but she's picked the wrong um, quotation uh, to back that up. Now one of the reasons that she's picked the wrong quotation is she's chosen obviously to pick something from the beginning. And you know, the link at the beginning could be about how um, characters are trying to reveal information or cover it up. So the photographer is trying to reveal the horrors of war, whereas in Remains, the protagonist is trying to hide from the horrors of war. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a, a, a similarity. It can be a complete difference. So Charlotte's problem here is she's chosen to make the wrong point um, in her comparison. And that point of unfairness doesn't link to the quotation that she's chosen or to the argument that she pulls afterwards. You know, the argument after is very good, but it's not structurally linked with the point she made before. And so this cause, uh, causes a problem. It means the argument is no longer well structured. And if it's not well structured, it can't explore fully. Uh, you know, if you're going to look at, you know, on the one hand this, but on the other hand that and explore, you have to be certain of the argument you're putting forward. Um, and it's the same when you're critical. When you're critical, you're basically looking at more than one viewpoint. Um, but if you're not backing up your viewpoints correctly, if you're not well structured in the way that you back them up, it's difficult to get the top marks for being critical. Okay. However, his feelings go unnoticed, which is similar to the soldier in Remains, as they both leave with negative emotions, yet they must live as if nothing has happened. Well, this is now a much stronger comparison, um, because it's true about both poets uh, and both protagonists. Duffy uses this to show that anyone involved in war can be affected by its horrors, no matter their position during the Vietnam War. Well, you can just about make that point, but um, it doesn't really work because this point really suggests that um, Duffy could have chosen anyone, a doctor, a nurse, a stretcher bearer, uh, a wife, um, and the fact that it was a war photographer doesn't really matter. And that makes your point much, much weaker. Duffy would have specifically chosen the role of war photographer for specific reasons. Um, and if you want to be exploratory, you need to deal with the specifics. You can't afford to be general. Uh, this is very well structured in the sense that you go from um, uh, one poem to the other poem. In Remains, Armitage expresses the after effects of war through the soldier's persona as the drink and drugs won't flush him out. The verb flush is a direct link to sickness which could represent his mental state. Therefore, he can't simply flush the memory from his mind. It is forever stuck with him. And even by using drugs and drinks, it will never erase the memory of a looter. So this is a very good paragraph with lots of beautifully embedded quotations, all linked to what Armitage wants us to understand about the protagonist. But it doesn't really relate fully back to this idea about um, why the negative emotions are there. The next paragraph is also structured well. Uh, the phrase, a similar idea should be to this, um, shows us that it was related to what went before, is used in War Photographer. As during his visit, the photographer sees a stranger's features faintly start to twist before his eyes, a half-formed ghost. The use of the ambiguous phrase, uh, we don't need the it, almost foreshadows the fate of the picture, as it could suggest that the image begins to fade into existence 
or a more sinister approach could be that he is seeing an injured or perhaps dead person in his mind, suggesting that his memories are haunting him. Uh, so this is a good explanation, although it's overly long. Um, it hasn't yet got to the reason why Duffy has included this language. So that's what should come in the next paragraph, hopefully. But uh, the quotation's embedded, and Charlotte's got a clear idea of what that quotation is trying to show. Um, however, um, she hasn't made anything of the word twist yet, and she hasn't really linked the idea of ghost to death, um, because ghost would point us much more towards a dead person than an injured one. And so again, she's being general rather than specific. If she'd zoomed in on ghost, she'd be much more specific in her analysis. And of course, the fact that the ghost is half formed suggests that the moment that this moment the, this picture was taken is the moment just before death, and that's why he's not yet a ghost. As well as in the um, in the image, the developed photograph is not actually formed yet, so it looks like a half formed person, and is therefore still a ghost. In her next paragraph, Charlotte is zooming into particular words. Yeah, she's going to zoom in on this part of the quotation, and that's a good technique. This is further supported through the use of the metaphor, twist before his eyes. This suggests that the war is playing with his mind, as he cannot seem to stop thinking about it. Well, this is another example of being general. Um, being specific would talk about the pain that he obviously feels in remembering this image. Um, and it's the pain of the person being killed reflecting in his new perspective. So he takes on the pain of the person that he's killed, you might argue. Um, but being specific will always get you higher marks. Just saying that his mind is affected doesn't really get specific. It's just general. You might as well just say he's upset. There is a similar contrast between remains in this instance, as they both find themselves almost overthinking regarding what they saw at the battlefield. Again, this is a really general point. Um, but is the poet saying that these people are overthinking things? Or is the poet suggesting that we do need to think really deeply about these things? And I would argue the latter, you know, that actually both poets want us to think very hard about what they're describing and they're not suggesting that their protagonists are spending too long over it. Uh, both Armitage and Duffy signify the importance of their emotions to give us a literal feel for those involved in war. Well that's a bit more specific isn't it? Um, they want to give us the literal feel for those involved in war but it's not specific enough. Well why do they want us to feel how these people feel? Well is it to stop the war? Is it so that we will sympathise with them? Uh, is it so, so that we won't sympathise with them because we think they should feel differently? The more specific you can be, the higher your mark will be. So let's pop over to the marking criteria and see where we are so far. So we can see in the structure, it's it's moving from one poem to the other and attempting to, to compare the same points from both poems. Um, it, I've told you the reasons where it isn't structured as well. It's trying to be conceptualized by looking at the poet's point of view, but isn't doing that specifically enough. It's too general. Is it answering the full task? Well, it is doing that at the minute. It's taking from different parts of the poem, and it keeps trying to come back to the poet's point of view. Is it exploratory? Um, it has a few perhapses and coulds, um, but if it's not dealing with the specifics of the argument, if it's too general, then it's not exploring properly. And in the same way, it's not being critical enough. It's not making fine enough judgments. Um, now, we also need to come down to this point here, supported by judicious use of subject terminology. So far, we've just had one reference to metaphor, I think, and that's not enough. Uh, you need to mention subject terminology each time you quote. Um, next, uh, she goes to the T of Bootsy, to the title. Um, the title of the two poems, it should be titles, are quite blunt, as the title War Photographer should be titled The War Photographer. Since this isn't the case, it could perhaps suggest 
that the job of the photographer doesn't deserve to be mentioned with a proper authoritative title. Um, so this is starting to be a really good idea. Um, Charlotte hasn't explained why Duffy would want to say that um, the war photographer doesn't deserve a, a title that suggests authority. Um, why she is conveying a lack of respect. Um, that would be a really interesting idea and it would be very specific, it would be very exploratory, um, but Charlotte doesn't do that, she needs to. Um, this is a technique, uh, putting the into the title, and therefore it needs some terminology, and the terminology is the defi definite article. That's what we call the word the. The definite article as opposed to the word a, which is the indefinite article. Uh, because we don't know which one A is, but we do know which one V is, because it's the one. The title of the poem also tells us that we will be presented with a series of pictures that will hopefully stick with us and force us, that should say, to respond to these images. So now we're starting to get into the uh, poet's purpose, and it's becoming exploratory. It could also juxtapose one another, it should be they could also juxtapose one another, as war is futile, horrifying and unpleasant, whereas a photographer is a pleasant, enjoyable, relaxing job and hobby. Uh, so that's good, and that's correct use of terminology. Therefore, the juxtaposition suggests that there is a conflict between the photographer's emotions, since he perhaps enjoys his job, but just not during the Vietnam War. Uh, so it was a brilliant point up until here. Um, but it's unlikely that Duffy is suggesting being a war photographer is a great job. It's just that in this particular war, it's not so pleasant, as though the killings in other wars were somehow much more pleasant to photograph. That just wouldn't make sense to a reader. And so we've gone from something specific here to something that doesn't really follow it. Um, that doesn't make sense as an argument. And that's why this bit doesn't really score you any marks. This is therefore showing the difference between horror and pleasure. Well, it isn't. It's dealing with this um, very real problem that when we are faced with horrifying images and horrifying facts, we simply choose to ignore them. You know, for example, how many of you have decided to send out uh, hundreds of pounds to um, uh, charities responding to the refugees uh, in Syria? Well, you know, I haven't. Um, I, I do donate to many charities regularly, but I can't bear to think about the war in Syria. I've kind of basically shut it out of my mind. Um, and that's what we do. That's what the poem's about. It's attacking that kind of complacency that doesn't get involved in the wider world and say, look, we should change these things. Um, and you've got to recognize the poet's purpose if you're fully going to explore their ideas. And when you don't, you can see that you are no longer conceptualized. Um, you're not really thinking through the um, poet's ideas all the way through. Um, yes, it does have a range of judicious references. All the quotations are, are really good. They're well chosen. Um, is it fine grained? Uh, well, I've been trying to show you what fine grained looks like by telling you how to zoom into particular words and how to keep coming back to the poet's purpose. If you keep doing that, keep being conceptualized, coming back to the poet's purpose, you will always be insightful. And if you are looking at individual words, you will always be fine-grained. Okay, I'm going to leap forward in the essay now and look at a discussion of form or structure. So a neat trick that you can use to get the examiner on your side, on your side is actually to use the word structure in your answer, uh, which is very good. Um, and another way of doing it is to make sure you talk about the way the poem is laid out, if you like. Uh, so when you write about it, Jeanmont, you're automatically writing about structure. Um, the same could be true of that previous point when you're talking about juxtaposition or contrast. That's the way the poem is structured. So let's have a look at these two paragraphs. In War Photographer, the poem allow follows a cyclical structure as the poem ends where it starts. In this case, the photographer returns back to his dark room in stanza one before leaving from the aeroplane by stanza four. By doing this, Duffy has tried to make an impact on Sunday's supplement 
Well, it's not an impact on the supplement. It's on the readers. Yeah, it's on us. And so that crucial um, bit of information is missing. So I'll just put it in. Yet no matter how hard we try, our work views won't change. Well, it's not how hard we try. It will be how hard um, the photographer tries, isn't it? So I'll put he tries. Uh, this could perhaps suggest, again, that's being exploratory. This could perhaps suggest anger on Duffy's part. Since war is war, it will never change. And so everything is predetermined. Well, this is um, a really interesting idea. And I think Charlotte means that um, not war will never change, but we will never change in our response to war. We will simply allow it to happen. Now, that's much more specific. Um, and then that would link to the idea that everything is predetermined, uh, not because it actually is fated, but because we are too um, lazy, if you like, to change it. Uh, we won't change that fate and we allow it to happen. In contrast to remains, we see that the soldier is back at home, as it says, then I'm on home leave. The use of caesura, very good technical word there, and that is also how the poem is structured, suggests a sense of finality into thinking that going home will change him, but despite his efforts, it won't. This is supported by the conjunction, but I blink and he burst again through. Um, that's very good. Uh, and does prove that both um, poems are cyclical in structure. Um, we could argue that's the form of the poem. They're both in a cyclical form. Uh, so you're hitting those marks. Um, you've linked this to the poet's purpose, but only in a general sense and not a specific one. Uh, but there isn't a purpose here. Let's see if it's in the next paragraph. No, you link on to a new point. And so what's missing here is how this ending links to the poet's purpose. Now, this is the ideal place to do it. That's why um, Bootsy ends with E. Always write about the ending, because in any text, but especially in poems, the ending is always where we get the poet's um, final purpose. And uh, if you don't explore that, then you're chucking the marks. Let's go back to the um, marking criteria and see what writing about the ending would do. Um, well, writing about the ending automatically gives your argument a, a better structure because you start looking at alternative interpretations in your conclusion. If it's about the poet's point of view at the end, it has to be conceptualized. Uh, it also tells the examiner that you've done the full task because you've got to the end of the poem. It's just like a, an easy little checklist in the examiner's head. Um, it also shows that you've got a range of references because not only did you pick from the beginning, you've also picked from the end. Uh, it's hopefully going to make you insightful because at the end, the poet's purpose will be slightly different to what it was at the beginning. And when you're looking at something that's slightly different, you're saying you're being insightful, aren't you? And you're also being fine grained. You're, might, you're saying, yeah, the, the purpose is similar but it has a bit of a different emphasis. Um, and that makes it fine grained. Um, I think of it as a, in a shorthand as saying, yes, but. Yeah, so yes, I agree with what I said at the beginning, but I've got this little extra to add. That is my definition of fine grained for you. I hope that helps. Um, she has talked about uh, structure language all the way through but as you've seen not with enough subject terminology just with a bit um, if you write about the ending you're much more likely to be convincing in your exploration much more likely um, and if you're writing about the poet's point of view at the end you must be writing about perspectives uh, so you can see why i say that the ending of the poem is the most important bit um, to your answer only if you link it back to the poet's specific point of view. So hopefully Charlotte can see why she hasn't made it into the top band and also why she's nearly there. Um, you can find um, you can find her essay in the description to the video. I'll just uh, copy and paste it there um, so that you can play with it, uh, improve it, and try and get it to a full mark answer. 
Uh, it is very good. It's longer than the bit that I've just read because, um, hell, this is a massive video anyway, isn't it? But uh, anyway, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like more. And uh, good luck in your revision.